My name is Dr. Williams. I am a pediatrician here at Mariposa Community Health Center on the border. Uh, in the room with me, I have our medical director, Dr. Eladio Pideda. Um, I am a pediatrician and also the associate medical director here at, at Mariposa. So, you know, for the, for the next, you know, 20, 30 minutes, I um, have a couple of things that we wanted to, uh, to talk about. Um, first, you know, just wanted to give a quick update on the Delta variant and things that you should know. Second thing, we're going to give some updates on uh, some recent changes that actually occurred this week. Um, new recommendations from the CDC. Um, third thing we're going to talk about is uh, specifically people with disabilities, um, some things you should know in terms of COVID. And then lastly, we're going to update you on some of our vaccination efforts here in Santa Cruz County and also, also on the border. Got it. So, you know, the first thing we're going to talk about is a little bit about the Delta variant. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard a lot of different things um, in, terms of, in terms of the variant. So I just want to give you some quick information on on what, what, what it is. So the Delta variant uh, actually originated in India. It was uh, actually first identified, I believe, in December of 2020. Um, the natural course of viruses, obviously, is that viruses can mutate. Um, it's common with, with other viruses. So, you know, you've heard about the alpha variant that was um, uh, the, the UK variant. We, of course, have the native, native strain that we uh, first saw more than a year and a half ago. What is specific about the Delta variant is it's, it's how, how, how infectious it is. So, you know, if you look at last week to this week, you know, the beginning of, of July, I think the week of July 3rd, um, the number of percent of Delta variant was roughly 50% of new cases. Um, so if you, if you look at the number of cases from July 3rd, roughly 50% of cases of COVID were, 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 were the Delta variant. Whereas now, you know, the week of this week, up to 83% of, 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 of cases of COVID are, are the Delta variant. Um, we do know that, you know, it spreads roughly 55% faster than that alpha variant, which is the, 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 the variant from, from, from United Kingdom. And it also, why the reason is, is that it, it replicates at a much, much faster rate. Um, we also are seeing much higher viral loads. It's roughly a thousand times higher, higher viral load with the, with, the, with the alpha variant. And specifically for Arizona, there's been a roughly 68% increase in the rise of COVID cases just from last week until this week. Again, the Delta variant is what's driving this, this increased number of cases. There's an interesting number called the r naught. So the r naught basically looks at um, how many people um, uh, one person can, can infect. So with the, the native uh, coronavirus, the r naught was roughly 2.5, meaning that one person uh, could spread the illness to roughly 2.5 other people. In terms of the Delta variant though, that has increased to between five, in some cases I've said it even up to nine, meaning that one person can spread the disease up to, up to eight, or eight or nine people. So obviously it is much more tr transmissible, much, much more, much more um, contagious which is one thing, again, that is leading to this, this higher number of, of, of cases in, in our county. You know, as, as our, our wonderful Mayor Garino mentioned, um, you know, the majority of people in our community are vaccinated, but obviously it's not, it's not everyone. As you know, um, the vaccine is only for those 12 and above. Uh, you know, there's been kind of varying data of when the vaccine will be available for kids under the age of 12. Um, you know, some some thinks as early as maybe um, maybe November, you know, probably not until till mid winter, we would actually see the vaccine in younger kids. Why? Because uh, we need roughly four to six months of safety data um, in kids, as opposed to only roughly two months of safety data for, for, for adults. So it's obviously not here yet and it'll be a while. So, you know, as you see across the country, there's been a rise in the number of cases in the unvaccinated, you know, roughly, 99.5% of cases um, of, of deaths and hospitalizations are all, all unvaccinated. And then roughly 95% of new infections are also in, in, the un, are in unvaccinated people. Um, as you see, as you've seen around the country, there's obviously an increase in rise of cases of, among kids, especially again, those kids that are under the age of, of, of 12. So in terms of recent updates, you know, things kind of changed and I, there's been a lot of confusion, I think, in terms of, you know, who wears masks, who doesn't wears, wear masks. So I wanted to kind of give a quick update 
on the, uh, the most recent uh, CDC guidelines. So I think it was on Tuesday, the CDC updated their, their recommendations. They said that basically in order to prevent the spread of Delta variants, we need to do things a little bit different. So specifically, they now rec recommend masks for fully vaccinated uh, people when they're indoors, when the rate of spread in your, in your community is substantial or high. Um, as of uh, the most recent data that was reported on the AZDHS website uh, two weeks ago, uh, we were in the uh, substantial rate range for the percent positivity and also the moderate range for the uh, cases, um, the number of cases uh, per 100,000. Um, you can view that data on the AZDHS website or honestly, the Johns Hopkins uh, website, I think has, has it's, it's not that two week lag, it's, it's probably more, more up-to-date data. So, um, you know, as of a couple of weeks ago, we were in that kind of moderate to substantial range, meaning that they would recommend uh, masks even for vaccinated people uh, indoors. Um, why did they make the, the, that, that, the, that new change? One, of course, is due to the, the Delta variant. When they originally changed their mask, uh, their mask recommendations a few months ago, it was when the um, incidence and the, the rates of Delta variants was 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 much 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 lower. Um, as you know, of course, that has has all changed. So because the virus has changed, then we also need to change our, our behaviors. Um, you know, when you go back to May 13th, um, when you look at the look, look at the data in May, it was rough. The Delta variant was only roughly one percent. Of, of, of cases, where as I mentioned earlier, now it's up to 83% of cases. And also, you know, I'm sure you've read recently in the news, um, the transmissibility is, is, is so much higher. You know, CNN recently reported that it, it's roughly up there with, with chicken pox. You know, when we think about really, really, really transmissible diseases, you know, chicken pox, uh, measles is very transmissible. And now, you know, the Delta variant is right up there in terms of, in terms of how easy it is to, to, to spread. The other important thing to note is that, you know, initially we've already always heard that kind of six feet rule and, you know, roughly 15 minutes, meaning that, you know, you are, uh, if you're roughly six, six feet away, um, and if you haven't been around someone for 15 minutes or more, then your risk of spread is significantly lower. With the Delta variant, that actually has changed. Um, you know, uh, it's, it could be as early as much as five minutes or less of, of being in contact with somebody with COVID and, and you, can, you can spread. And, you know, it's only just a couple of feet. You don't have to be roughly um, six feet away. So because of all these reasons is one of the reasons why the CDC, they wanted to update their, 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 most, recent, uh, their most recent recommendations. Um, another thing that they, they recommend is now they recommend uh, masking indoors for teachers, staff, students, regardless of their vaccination status. Um, as you may have heard, um, the governor uh, mentioned that he uh, that, uh, said that we can't have mask mandates, but all of our schools are, are highly recommending that, that students wear a mask. Of course, we are doing the same. But again, it's not only students, also teachers, something you should wear a mask at, at, at all times. Another, another change that occurred this week is that there were, I think it was almost 50 of the governing health bodies made a recommendation. So the American Academy of Pediatrics, of Family Medicine, of Surgery, Internal Medicine, they recommend uh, mandatory vaccines for all healthcare workers. So, you know, Banner and Tucson, and you're gonna see this kind of as a growing trend, have actually had uh, um, uh, mandates for, for, for vaccines. And I think, you know, honestly, that's going to become uh, the trend, especially in healthcare areas. Why? You know, because in healthcare, of course, we are around uh, people all the time. So we want to make sure that, um, they, you know, the, that we, we, we protect all. There's also been increasing data that's shown that even if you're vaccinated, um, you um, still can have a very high viral load. And of course, you still can transmit. The, the advantage, of course, of vaccines is that you just don't get that sick. So even though I'm vaccinated and, and I uh, may have a higher viral load, uh, my chance of getting severely ill is, is, is much, much less. So what does that mean, you know, specifically for kids with autism or specifically for kids with, with other, other, other d d disabilities? So there's been a, a couple of things. Um, you know, having a disability doesn't necessarily mean that you are at more risk of being infected or, or, or having a severe outcome from, from COVID. Um, we do know, obviously, that 
some underlying medical conditions does put you at an increased risk. So for instance, if you have lung disease, if you have heart disease, if you have a weak immune system, of course, those are all major risk factors to having um, a possible bad outcome with COVID. One thing though, that we do realize that specifically for people with, with disabilities is that they could be at a higher risk, meaning that if, for instance, they live in congregate settings, if they have uh, frequent um, healthcare, healthcare visits, or if they have any of those chronic issues like heart disease, like lung disease, like lung disease, they actually could be at more risk. So for instance, you know, um, um, patients with Down syndrome, they have their, their certain cardiac associations. So if you do have, um, if you have certain cardiac associations, if you do have other issues, you may be at increased risk. Another thing that could put uh, um, um, our, our, our fellow uh, patients with, with disabilities at increased risk is, you know, they may have limited mobility. Their ability to wear a mask may, may, be, may, be, may be hampered. You know, for instance, um, some of my patients with autism, you know, having them wear a mask all day at school is just, is just impro improbable. You know, it, it's hard. They, they want to take it off. Um, so they also may have, may have barriers with, 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 with hand washing, meaning that, you know, I have a little boy I saw on Wednesday um, that has, has severe autism that, you know, he has a, he has a phobia to, 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 to certain things like water and hand sanitizer. So because of that, he obviously would be, would be at, at increased uh, risk. And also, you know, in terms of, of caretakers, they may have caretakers, respite workers that are, that are, that are have a more, a more frequent interaction. So it's, it's harder for them to, you know, not have constant contact with people um, also may put them at, at increased risk. So their specific disability may not, but then all the other things that kind of surround the disability may put them at increased risk of, of having COVID or, or, or having potentially a, a, a worse outcome. Um, you know, another thing I could, could just quickly want to touch on before we open up to questions um, are vaccinations, kind of what we've done here in our area and what we need to continue to do. So the first thing that we should say is that, you know, we've learned that vaccines really work. Um, you know, if you look at the overall rates of, of, of COVID infection in our county, you know, you know that we had a huge surge in December. And then in January, when we began our vaccinations efforts here in our county, the, the rates significantly decreased. Um, of course, we are seeing a little bit of surge now, which as I mentioned is, is, is mainly due to the, the Delta variant and people still not being vaccinated, but the rates are, are down. Why did that occur? You know, one major thing is the partnership that we had between our local leaders, you know, like Mayor Garino, our, our, our county leaders like Jennifer St. John and Jeff Terrell, our, um, our, our head of our, our health department here. And then also, you know, the schools, the police department, the fire department. Um, if any of you were vaccinated at our locations at the Nogales Rec, I think you can attest to the fact that it was very well organized. It was um, extremely efficient. Um, another major advantage is that we had multiple physicians uh, there uh, uh, during our vaccine efforts. We always had at least myself, Dr. Pedeta, there probably 95% of the time. The reason was really just to answer questions. Um, obviously, we were there in case someone had a reaction, but the main reason why we were there was to answer questions. For instance, we had I don't know, probably hundreds of people over the five months that we were there that they may be hesitant, they may just have a quick question. You know, some people would just stop by and say, hey, you know, I read this or read that. I'm kind of considering the vaccine, should I get it or not? And that's what we were there, there, there for. So um, that collaboration and also having kind of physicians on hand to answer a lot of those questions is, is a few things that I think that led to our, our efforts. Um, you know, also just like Mayor Garino said, um, as you know, we were a hot spot here for a while. So obviously, people see that, and I think that because of that, it really drove people to try to to try to get vaccinated. You know, one um, challenge that we're having now is in the remaining of people that that still need to be vaccinated. Most people that that have not been vaccinated, they have very strong opinions on on why they don't want to be vaccinated. So our efforts have changed from you know kind of broad vaccination strategies to, strategies to more individualized efforts to, um, to try to educate them and try to explain, you know, why, uh, why vaccines are, 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 are necessary and why they are, why, why they are important. So, you know, I wanted to talk for 10, 15 minutes, but I wanted to open it up for questions just because again, in a setting like this, um, you know, feedback from, from you and from our other colleagues is, is what is, is, is really necessary. 
Um, so I want to open it up for maybe 10 minutes of, of, of any of any questions. If there are any questions, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is, you know, for people that haven't been vaccinated, what can we do? So currently at Mariposa, we're vaccinating um, every uh, Tuesday and Thursday. And we are quickly seeing that the demand is still pretty high. So we are um, actually offering more, uh, more days to vaccinate, um, um, some Wednesdays and also some, some, some Fridays, and that could change to, 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 to more. Um, in order to make an appointment, if you go, if you call the clinic or even uh, we have a link on our website, um, it can, uh, that'll take you to, to, to where you can, can, can register. And then, of course, I'll put my my email in the uh, in the chat. If you have any issues uh, getting an appointment for the vaccine, then please contact us. You know, we're a little worried. You know, we don't have a, a ton of slots. We can do roughly 120 uh, slots for vaccinations per day here in our here in our clinic. And I believe most of those slots are already filled until until August. But of course, if you need any help, then I am more than willing to to help you. Also, of course, um, other local places in town like like Walmart and Walgreens. Uh, are also offering offering vaccines. Um, so um, again, please contact us. Our goal is to try to get you in as quickly as possible, especially for students. You know, students go back to school. I think here on uh, Monday of the of, of, of this coming week, and also Wednesday. Um, as you know, in order to be fully vaccinated, it's two weeks after your second dose. So even if someone is vaccinated today, you know, it's roughly a little over a month before we consider them them fully vaccinated. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine, as you know, um, is one shot and then you get your second shot 21 days later. Moderna is 28 days later. So you could get fully vaccinated a little bit sooner uh, with the, the Pfizer, the F Pfizer va vaccine. And also, you know, Johnson & Johnson, um, I currently don't think we actually have any Johnson & Johnson vaccines on, on hand. Uh, we're having a, 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 a little bit of issues getting the Johnson & Johnson in. Of course, the Johnson Johnson is only one vaccine, and then you would you would be considered fully vaccinated uh, two, 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 two weeks later. We have a question from one of our participants. Um, they're asking, what recommendations do you have on the schools for when they return to class and what measurements can they take? That is a great question. I think the first thing is that I would recommend, of course, that everyone does wear a mask. Um, we know that masks help, right? We know that whenever, even when there was a surge, uh, whenever we started masking, then we know that the rates of infection dramatically decreased. So one thing is wear a mask at all times. Um, you know, the second thing is, you know, obviously distancing is, is also important. And we also recommend uh, that hand washing also is extremely important. So all of the things that we've done for, for the, last, the last few months, we think are, 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 are extremely important. You know, another thing um, that we recommend is, of course, vaccinating against influenza. Um, so we should get our, vac our influenza vaccines in, and sometimes it's late August, probably not until kind of mid-September. Um, you know, influenza can, can mimic some of the same symptoms as COVID. So getting vaccinated for influenza is, is extremely important. Uh, the third thing is, 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 is testing, especially if you are symptomatic. So if you have any symptoms, and just so you know, really any symptom can mimic COVID, meaning, you know, we've had a huge surge of people in the hospital that have had just kind of nausea, maybe vomiting, diarrhea, that, you know, don't have the classic cough and fever that you may associate with COVID that are coming out COVID positive. So we're recommending really any symptoms, even fatigue, really anything. If you feel anything outside of the norm, then please get tested. And we actually have a rapid uh, COVID machine. It's a PCR. You know, not all rapid testing is equal. Some are the antigen tests, which um, overall has a lower sensitivity and specificity than the uh, PCR. We do have a rapid PCR machine where we will get the results back within an hour. So um, any symptoms at all, you know, we recommend one, excluding yourself from school. And then of course you, you, you should get tested. Um, and then of course, if you're ill, if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, do not go to school. We mentioned how contagious the Delta variant is. So again, any symptoms at all, stay, stay at home. Um, you know, also for exposures, the recommendation for exposure, even for vaccinated people has changed. Meaning that if before, if you were fully vaccinated and you, you were exposed to somebody with COVID, there really were no isolation guidelines. That is still true, meaning that if you're fully vaccinated and you're exposed, um, you still don't necessarily have to isolate as long as you are asymptomatic. If you have any symptoms, you still have to isolate and get tested. But uh, the CDC does now recommend uh, testing three to five days after 
um, exposure to somebody with COVID, even for those who, who, who are vaccinated. Um, you know, I'm looking at a, um, uh, our medical director made a, a great little summary, which we can actually kind of send out. We're gonna uh, meet with the schools today. Um, so just kind of reviewing that to make sure that I, um, that I cover everything. You know, another thing that we think is important is not necessarily um, hasn't been recommended by the CDC, but you know there's other groups around the country that are doing it. Is um, frequent testing for those who are high risk. So, for instance, you know um, one of the things that we're going to recommend to the schools today is that if you're in a high risk group, meaning that you have chronic chronic health, health chronic health issues, or even if you're at increased risk of of exposure to other people, meaning athletes we're gonna recommend that we do testing roughly every two weeks for, 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 for that population under, under, under the age of 12. And again, under the age of 12, why, why do we choose that group? It's because those are the ones who, 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 who are, were not vaccinated. Um, and as I mentioned before, another thing that's important is of course vaccinations, um, excuse me, uh, is testing for anyone who is sick. So even if you're over the age of 12 and you're sick, we also wanna recommend for, for frequent, frequent vaccinations for, for that group as well. And then another we thing we really recommend is, um, is of course, vaccination for, for family members. Of course, you know, even if, um, um, you know, if you have other people in the family who, who aren't vaccinated and, you know, the kids are going to school, then we want to make sure that we really vaccinate, vaccinate everyone. Dr. Williams, we do have another question. Um, how efficient is the vaccine for children? Um, and do you know what side effects of any side effects? Yeah, great question again. So, you know, there's been, the good thing is that we have a pretty large sample size of patients, patients of people that have received the vaccine. There's been roughly, I think, over 380 million people that have received, you know, the, the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. So I know, we know that our vaccination numbers are really, really high. In terms of side effects, the main side effects that we see are local reactions, meaning that you could have, you know, low grade fever, you may have arm at the, at the side of, of, of injection, you may have a little bit of, of fatigue. And the reason why you get the, those local reactions is that it's, it's your body building up an immune response, meaning that um, your body starts to pr produce antibodies and that's the expected reaction and what we want. And anytime that happens, you can you know, feel a little crummy for, for a couple of days. Um, typically those, those symptoms go away within, within two to three days. Uh, we always recommend if you do have prolonged symptoms for more than that, um, then please consult with your doctor to see if, if, you, have, if, you, have, if you have some, some, some something else. Overall, you know, the risk of, of severe illness is extremely, extremely low. You know, there's been cases, of course, of, you know, of, of blood clots and, and associated with some vaccines. Um, those are, you know, it's, it's, it's 0.0005% of people that actually have a severe reaction. So your risk is extremely low. Um, the vaccine is, is very, very safe. And I think there's a second part to your question. Did I, did I answer the second part? I think so. The second, I think, yeah, I think you, I think we're good on that. So we do have a question um, from our Facebook audience. Um, the question is, uh, question parents have after experiencing a severe case of COVID-19, is it still safe to get the vaccine? Great question, very good question. So the answer is, is yes. Um, we do know a lot of people, a lot of questions that I get is, you know, I've had COVID, should I get the vaccine? The answer definitely is yes, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main reason is that if you have, if you are infected with COVID, you can still get infected again. We've seen a lot of cases of, uh, cases of, of reinfection. We do know that if you get the vaccine, you actually have a more robust immune response, meaning that you actually have more protection from future disease with the vaccine versus, uh, versus if, you, if you have had COVID before. I'm sure you. I'm sure that you've read that it's roughly 95% protective of COVID if you are vaccinated, significantly less if 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 you aren't, even if you've had COVID in in the, in the past. So it, it is necessary and it it, it is it, it is safe. We had another question from our Facebook audience. Um, what about the CanSino vaccine? C A N S I N O vaccine. Is it safe for children? Yeah, so I think I think the casino is that is I believe it's the, the Chinese vaccine that isn't isn't given here. You know, unfortunately though, we don't have a lot of data that we can comment on it. You know, obviously the three vaccines that we give here are the Moderna, Pfizer, and, and, and Johnson and Johnson. 
Um, so un unfortunately, you know, I don't have a lot of data on, on other vaccines who aren't, who aren't get given here. You know, there have been, a, you know, a, 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 there have been a, a fair amount of data on, for instance, the Astra AstraZeneca vaccine or other types of mRNA vaccines. And as you know, in most places around the world, AstraZeneca vaccine was given, but then it was stopped. Um, in those cases, um, um, we do recommend receiving another type of mRNA vaccine. So, you know, either getting Pfizer or, or the Moderna. And there have been a lot of case reports of a higher antibody response after someone had the AstraZeneca and then got an, another type of, of, of mRNA vaccine. There actually have, have been higher antibody responses in, in those people, meaning that like is, is, is more protective. Other, other, other questions. Good morning, Dr. Williams, my good brother. Hello, Mr. Freeman, how are you doing? Doing awesome. I have a quick question. I get um, calls from people that are homebound with disabilities and can't get out to get the vaccination. Do you guys provide in your area opportunity for people to get vaccinated? That is a great homes? question. That is a great question, and yes, we do. You know, one of the advantages of community health centers is that you know we can offer. I think a lot of services that aren't aren't typical in, in, in other settings. So the answer is yes. So um, we have physicians that can go out and do home visits. We also have, have clinical pharmacists, we have nurses. So yes, we can. Um, if there are anyone who is homebound, then please, um, again, I'll put my email, you can email me and we can arrange it. And that's honestly something that, that we've done. We've done a lot of vaccines, not just here in Nogales, Rico, also as far as Patagonia, Again, if you can't come to us, we will go to you. Yo quiero hacer una pregunta. Sí. Eh, eh, respecto a la variante Delta, si en mi caso eh, eh, tuve las dos dosis ya de la vacuna Pfizer, mmm, definitivamente quienes estamos ah. vacunados ¿Estamos igual de vulnerables con la variante Delta o qué grado de protección tenemos al haber sido ya vacunados? Yeah, it's, it's, it's another, another great question. So yeah, you are at, at less risk. So we do know that, you know, all the vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, even Johnson & Johnson, they are protective against the, 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 the Delta variant. So you will, uh, you, are, you, are, you are protected and you do have, have decreased risk of, of getting the vaccine um, with, with, with all, all, all three of those vaccines. Any other questions? Great questions, by the way. Well, we did have one more sí, question. De la variante Delta. We did have one more question in the chat. Um, it says, good morning. If the current vaccine does not protect against the Delta variant, what is the one that affects young people? Will it still be applied to them? Or is it necessary to wait for a modification in the vaccine? Yeah, so we the, the good news is that you know the current vaccines that we have they they are they are they are pr protective. Um, so again, even you know even with this rise in, in in Delta variants, you know if you're vaccinated, you know your risk of having severe illness or hospitalization is, is, is still very very low. Um, so so yes, it, it it is it is it is definitely protective. Um, you know currently the Pfizer vaccine is the only vaccine that is approved for kids uh, for, for kids 12 12 and above and it does offer good protection especially uh, in terms of, of, of severe illness and honestly that that's really what we want obviously you know death death and hospitalization is the main thing you know again as I mentioned before um, if you are vaccinated you know is there a risk that you could have what's called a breakthrough infection and and still become positive I'm sure but again, the risk of you getting sick is 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 extreme is, is extremely low. Okay, gracias. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So, um, again, my uh, information will be in the chat. If you have any other questions, any other information, feel free to contact us. And thank you very very much. It has been an absolute pleasure.